Hello Shred Nation and welcome to an experiment. What you're about to see is the very first time that I have ever held a microphone in my hand and started asking questions to someone I've never met before. It was filmed at the Rip Curl Grom Search last weekend and it features the best competitive surfing talent in America under the age of 18. When I did this, my goal was to learn more about what these kids were surfing but also try to understand more about how they view their surfboards. I have a lot of room to improve at this kind of thing but I had so much fun doing it. I really hope that you enjoy. Hopefully I don't mess up the intro the first time. <laughs> Chris here at the Rip Curl Grom Search 2014 with Maddie Peterson. Hi Maddie. Hey. Here with John Meld, here with Luke Marks, here with Pat Curran. Luke, thanks for joining us. I've got to ask you, about a year ago, an edit popped up on YouTube of Sebastian Inlet called Sebastian Inlet Super Session. You were in it, Kelly was in it, Matt Cackley was in it. And in that clip, you had the best couple waves and the best couple turns. How does that feel to beat out Kelly in a clip? <laughs> Oh my gosh, the waves were absolutely horrible. I'm surprised they call it a super session. It was like barely knee high. My friend texts me, hey, Kelly's at Sebastian. I'm like, there's no way. I mean, come on, it's like one foot. And he goes, no, I swear. So I go down there. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's out there. So I paddled out. I, mean, I was trying to impress him, like serve as hard as I could. And I guess, it, I don't know, I got a couple of fun ones. <laughs> were you out in the water? Like, it's on, it's a heat. I got to look good. There's cameras on the beach. I'm going to beat out Kelly. I was like, this is like kind of like my home spot now. Kelly kind of left. It was his. I was like, dude, I got to like, you know, kind of just put my name out there with his. <laughs> I have to ask you, you guys have this crazy tarp slip inside at your house. Has anyone ever got injured on that thing? Actually, someone broke their jaw. Have you ever surfed a quad before? I have, but it just, I feel like it's too slidey. I don't like it. <laughs> I've never surfed a quad before, but I like the thrust. The thrusters are pretty fun, I guess. I've never ridden a quad. <laughs> I actually never rode a quad, so. I've been surfing thrusters for my whole life, kind of. I haven't really tried a quad yet. Have you ever surfed a quad before? Um, one time, but I didn't like it that much. What did you not like? What did you feel that you didn't like? It wasn't that loose, it, and it would go too fast. I don't really like uh, riding quads in kind of rippable ways because it just doesn't feel like I can really turn as well. It's just kind of a weird, I, it's kind of like a mindset that I'm like, I can't ride it in rippable waves. I don't know why. Some people like them, but I really love riding four fins in barrels because it goes really fast, and that's probably my favorite. And, and it can handle better because there's more fin, obviously. So I've been experimenting with quads a lot and like small waves been working really good. Then like barrels, I like it a lot. Thrusters, I feel like it has a better drive off the bottom, kind of. And with quads, it's kind of more, it's not as drivey. It's kind of more, uh, more horizontal surfing, kind of. And in barrels, uh, quads go really fast, so. I like them a lot. Do you usually surf these black sticks in like any waves that you find or do you switch up your fins depending on what the waves are like? I like to switch up my fins. Um, I usually, these are like my go-to fins. They're really flexy and then um, usually bigger waves I'll stick in the John Johns. I don't switch up my fins too much. It just kind of depends if it's 10 foot sunset or <laughs> one foot uppers. But <laughs> right now I'm riding the Jordy mediums. I just moved up. I used to ride the YUs, but I'm really liking the Jordys. They push back a lot, so it's nice. You got the FCS2 performers in there. Do you surf those fins in every board no matter what? Or do you switch up fins relative to conditions, like just like you would your boards? Normally I stick to performers, but one of the ways to get a little bigger, I usually put the carvers in or something at that tempo, like the mix or something, but mostly if it's under like head high, you just use the performers, they usually work good. On rail surfing or airs, you can only do one for the rest of your life, what do you do? I guess I'd probably go on rail. Is there anything specifically in your boards that makes them feel really good on rail that you notice? Well, I tend to ride bigger boards. Um, mostly people ride, you know, the same height. Um, I do three inches above my head for all my boards um, because my coach Kahea thinks it's better, and I really love it. And it's, it shows like more board and more power. I think it just makes you look bigger. Like if you're a smaller person, like if you ride the same size, it's gonna look like a smaller turn, you know. So if you're riding a bigger board, you can throw more spray and just make all around look bigger. It's 411 and it's uh, 17 and a quarter, and it's only an inch and seven eighths thick. You're surfing a disco. Yeah. By Marcio Zuvi at Sharp Eye. Do you surf this around New Jersey, or is this just a California um, board? I do because it. Um, I think people have been recognizing how fast I've been on the sport. This is a CI rookie. I've been riding the rookie for maybe two or three months, and it's just it kind of works for me and everything, so I'm just really comfortable on it, and that's why I chose it. It's a little bit narrower in the tail, so it can hold really well, and I could kind of ride it and 
basically anything. It's pretty rockered out, so it is a little bit looser and faster. So it kind of evens out with the rocker and the narrow tail. So I can handle and it can still like throw the tail or whatever. You're ahead of a lot of these kids here because you've actually got your own branded model board with Roberts called yeah. the Beaver. What is that like to have your own board out there in shops that people can just go buy? Um, I don't know. I don't really think about it. I mean, it's cool to see people riding the same board that I ride, but it doesn't really get in my head too much. What do you feel on a swallowtail that makes you really like it versus like a squash or a rounded thumb? Well, it's a little looser, so when I do my turns, I can kind of slide the tail out a little more, and it's just like, I like it when it's kind of smaller. I'm riding just a standard shortboard. It's a, I'm riding a 5'7", and uh, it works good, you know? I mean, it's a tuned-up shortboard, and... Uh, it just, I don't know, I like it. It's working good out here in these pockets. I'm able to turn as hard as I can on it. And is this what you'd surf every day at Sebastian, or do you kind of go, like, shorter, wider, less rocker? Uh, when I'm surfing at home, I usually go shorter, wider, fatter, just because it's, like, short little punchy waves. Um, It's just a normal shortboard, okay model, 5'9". I usually ride this model all the time, and I just get it, like, shrunken down for smaller surf and wider. But, yeah, I like the rocker and everything on it. It works good. I chose this board, well, because it's kind of, like, newer. It kind of has a good pop on it. So uh, I was riding a new board or, like, an older Magic board before this, but it kind of got almost too old. So I switched to this thing. It feels really good. How long do you feel that pop when you have a brand-new PU board? How long does it last when it still feels poppy and fresh and new? Uh, probably about, like, a month or so. This is a V2 short board. Um, it's 5'9". It's, this is my favorite uh, model. This one's epoxy, so it goes really good in like little ways, like today. What do you feel personally, like the difference between epoxy and PU? The epoxy, like, it's it's just really floaty in the small ways. That's why I'm riding it right now. But um, when it gets a little bigger, like you want a PU, so you can just like do like better carves and stuff. I usually ride a lot of the epoxies, but this is actually a poly, so it's it's a little bit different because epoxies are usually like more floatier and stuff. But I mean, it's just this board's good because when you have a magic board, it works in small ways, like bigger waves, especially when it's a poly. Because poly is probably more for bigger waves. In small waves, I'll ride an epoxy, or bigger waves, I'll ride a, a polyester. You know. I had my first epoxy like only a couple months ago, and it works really well in smaller waves, I'd say. But I think I rather use polys better than, I like polys more than epoxies. Polys, I think, are better because you can do like real turns rather than kind of like weaving around on a on an epoxy. I've actually never rode an epoxy, but I have one that got done yesterday I'm gonna go pick up. Yeah, the epoxy, I have one down here right now. It's really good, but I think I might just stick to this one. How much do you pay attention to like rockers and concaves and what the rails are like on your boards? Do you look at that stuff really closely or do you just not even really pay attention to it? I really don't pay attention to it, but my dad like can tell and stuff, I guess. You mentioned you're getting boards from Chris Gallagher. How involved do you get with him? Do you really like nerd out with him and talk about rockers and concaves and constructions? Or do you kind of just say, make me boards and I'll tell you what I like? <laughs> well, he's my coach, so I mean, I work with him a bunch, so he kind of knows what to shape me. He'll see me doing something so he can shape to how I surf, so it's super cool. It's not so much of a surfer shaper relationship. It's like we're best friends. I mean, we go on trips together and takes me surfing in the morning. It's cool because we surf together and like he sees me surfing and he's, he's enough of a good shaper to know and he's enough of a good surfer to know what I need and like, you know, the width and the height and everything, so the thickness, so it, it's cool. I mean, I kind of pay attention to it, but at the same time, I mean, he probably pays more attention to it than I do. It's a model of mine, that, a board that was magic for me that I had hand shaped years ago, but it changes because as she gets taller, maybe the fins go in a different place, or we try to start trying different things. Little kid boards have a different scale than normal short boards, so it's a difference between making a car and a remote control car almost, so it changes things. You shaped your first board earlier this year, is that right? Yeah, I did, and it ended up almost being one of the better boards I've ever gotten. It's crazy. <laughs> what were you trying to make with that board? What were you going for, and what really worked for you? Um, I was just kind of winging it, and I just know my dimensions, so I just kind of shaped along. It was a little bit wider in the tail, so it was looser, and it was pretty flat, so it kind of helped the flowiness and stuff. How old are you? Um, I'm 11. Either or, you can stay 12 for the rest of your life, or you can grow up. Which do you want to do? I want to grow up, but stay the same, because I want more power in my serving, but... I want to say the same, so when it's small, I can still be able to go. <laughs> Sounds like you want it both ways. Yes. <laughs> What's it feel like to surf better than everyone that's older than you? Um, 
it feels good, I guess. It's fun to go against big guys because there's not a lot of pressure. <laughs> What's it like to get free clothing, free surfboards, free wetsuits, free travel? How's it feel? It feels great. I'm just so thankful. I mean, without that, I'm, I don't know where I would be because everything's pretty expensive. Yeah.